Hi everyone, I'm Steve Stoller. And I'm Shauna Haley, and this is Inside Plano, where we take you behind the scenes of our city. We'll introduce you to the faces and places who help make this a great place to live. And give us lots of reasons to love Plano. Happy July, Steve Stoller. July is one of my favorite months of the year, not only for July 4th, but my birthday's in July. And you know what, Twinkie, it's my birthday too. That's right. That's, That's right. right. July birthdays, but I'm not I'm not going to go out there and say that July is my favorite month other than my birthday and your birthday and July 4th. I find it to be an unbearably hot and humid <laughs> time well, of year. You've got to look at the bright side of things. All right. Now, your our birthdays are only a few days apart. Exactly. And a few years, more than a few years. <laughs> just a couple, just a couple, but this is a big birthday for me this year. So I think we'll just pass right on by and pretend that it's not happening. <laughs> well, we got a lot going on in yes. July. So yes, can we, we tell them about the big event on July 4th? Absolutely. It's now, last year we were in the middle of the pandemic, so we couldn't have this event, but we, well, for people. We did. Yes. So what we did is we, I remember we took the fireworks and we got the highest ground in the area mm -hmm. and they shot them up even higher than they usually go so that more people could see them from not just that particular area in East Plano, but from around the city. So that way, you know, we tried to encourage social distancing and try to not have crowds. This year, we've got a choice. You can go there in person or you can watch it online. So Absolutely. this is July 4th. It's from 6 to 10 p.m. It's at the Red Tail Pavilion, which many of you remember used to be called the Oak Point Amphitheater as a new name. And the fireworks start at 930 in the evening. There's food and beverages uh, available for purchase. You can bring coolers, lawn chairs and blankets, but you got to leave your pets at home this time, folks. Sorry about that. Yeah, and it's not because we don't like pets. Plano is a dog-friendly city for sure, but just think about um, it's noisy, it's crowded, and all of those things lead to a very uncomfortable and unhappy time for dogs. So we don't want any lost pets. We don't want scared pets. I personally love to bring my Glory Bee with me everywhere I go, but it's not the best place for her. And so um, we're asking you to make the right decision for your pet and leave them home so they'll, they'll stay safe. And we talk a lot about, you know, inching back to a new normal mm -hmm. and having the July 4th event, an annual event that everybody in Plano looks forward to is part of that process of getting back to normal. Absolutely. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. And of course, like you said, we're still going to have a live stream. So if you don't want to get out, um, whether that's because of health concerns or hot concerns, you know, it is July. Um, feel free to tune in on Facebook. We'll have it streaming there and we'd love to have you join us. Everybody enjoys the All American Fourth event. Our Plano Arts and Events team does a terrific job putting that together every year. Um, speaking of terrific jobs, you know, one thing you were talking about things getting back to normal. One thing that we did during the pandemic has proven to be so popular that it is continuing on. And that is the free online art class that's going to still happen on Mondays at noon at Plano Arts and Events Facebook page. Tune in. It is amazing to me. People all around the world tune in to take those art classes. So it's a super great um, activity. You don't have to be terrific at art uh, to enjoy expressing yourself. And I would say right now, it's also a really good mental health <laughs> activity just to kind of lose yourself in a little bit of art. So uh, tune in on that. Uh, one more thing I want to mention, speaking of getting back to normal, I'm really excited about this because, of course, you and I office in downtown Plano, um, regular concerts returning to McCall Plaza. And boy, have I ever missed those concerts. Just need to um, follow Plano Arts and Events on their Facebook page. They'll announce the bands as they get booked and what date and time. And that will be a lot of fun. So we're excited to see stuff happening again. And if you've never been to a concert at McCall Plaza, it's great. It's such a wonderful environment. And I've been to several of them, Shauna. And I'll tell you, I've seen some really good bands. Mm -hmm. And it's just really laid back. You yeah. know, it's just a really nice environment to see a concert. They so, need what to see to come back for sure. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I liked uh, they had a Cars cover band uh, that was there. I can't remember the name of them, but they were really good. 
Yeah. They were really good. So have you heard about the sensory friendly days at Plano Pools? You know, I, I hadn't heard of them. So I think this is a new thing they're doing this year. Yeah, this is really cool. So it's exclusive time for children with autism spectrum disorders, ASD, and sensory processing differences to have some fun, some an interactive learning experience in a comfortable environment, no music. Uh, the cost is regular admission and participants are welcome to stay once the pool opens to the public. I think that's wonderful. We have a lot of families I know that'll take advantage of that. So great job, Plano Parks and Rec. And hey, I have another great job for Plano Parks and Rec. And I know that you're aware of this, Steve, because I saw you putting some information together. Plano Parks and Recreation is the number one in Texas, number 15th in the United States, um, based on the Trust for Public Lands annual park score. And of course, you might be saying to yourself, what is the park score based on? It's based um, on access, investment, acreage, amenities, and equity. So our park score um, shows that 78% of our residents live within a 10 minute walk, not drive, a walk of a park. We actually have 85 parks in the city of Plano, 98 miles of trails, um, five recreation centers, nine public pools. So what a wonderful thing Plano Parks and Recreation has done in building this great park system that we can all enjoy. I really think it's a highlight. It's one of the top things that people say drew them to Plano and that they love about Plano, our wonderful, wonderful parks. We love to brag about it and rightfully so. There's no question we have one of the premier mm -hmm. parks and recreation systems, not only in Texas, but across the country. And that's proven year after year after year. Absolutely. Our libraries have a lot going on too. The summer takes steps to better, this summer, you can take steps to better your money management. I know you and your husband, Kelly, are really into money management. We are. <laughs> and you've been through some of these courses before. Mm -hmm. But you can take uh, the first steps on credit and banking. You can find ways to make smart financial choices when faced with the unexpected, and many of us are. And some of the classes this month include managing your parents' money and money management first steps, good courses for anyone who wants to take them. Absolutely. And um, I'm definitely going to be taking the money, man man managing your parents' money, because that's the season of life that we're in right now. And uh, we could use some tips and advice because we've never navigated this path. Um, you know, another great program that they're doing this summer is the Living Well series. It's a summer um program for adults and seniors to learn how to improve balance, stability, get tips for maintaining good health, social connections, and mobility. Um, in fact, in July, they're going to focus on tips for your health and sp specifically, as well as social connections and mobility. And critically important, you know, as you age, making sure all of that's buttoned up. And I would be remiss. We talked about how wonderful our parks are. I know we mentioned it last month. It's worth mentioning again, our Plano Public Library uh, named 2021 uh, Library of the Future. What they do is just different than things that you see anywhere else. So we are super proud of our, our library and the impact that each of those five library locations makes on our on our city. And there's so many people that love to learn mm -hmm. during the summer and they have such a wide array of courses to take and activities. The summer learning will continue at the libraries with workshops, activities and programs all summer long. And it's such a plethora of opportunities there. Absolutely. Lifeline learning with the Plano Library. Um, so let's talk about neighborhoods. I feel like uh, we all are intimately familiar with our neighborhoods after a year of staying home more. You know, many of us here in Plano live in a, uh, a neighborhood that either has an HOA, voluntary or mandatory, or you have a neighborhood association, crime watch group. Did you know, Steve, that there is actually a neighborhood leadership academy uh, designed to help those organizations do an even more effective job? Uh, we are bringing that academy back. It took a hiatus last year during the pandemic, uh, but they are very excited to reopen for the 
2021-2022 class series, and they're opening up those applications. This year, you do have to be an HOA or neighborhood association or a crime watch group. What they do is they pick four to five of those organizations out of the applicants, and they meet once a month, starting in October all the way through September. They meet, like I said, once a month, and they learn about how you kind of assess strengths and gaps on what you're doing as a neighborhood, how to better uh, communicate what your neighborhood does, how to organize, get people involved, help neighbors get to know neighbors, like really just make your, your small neighborhood within the city of Plano be even more effective and, and connected. Um, so applications open on the 6th. We'll have the link to everything that you need in the show notes and thrilled to see that program come back. two special guests with us today, Shauna, and both of them are urban foresters. One of them is our own Plano urban forester from our Parks and Recreation Department, and that's Mark Bodwin. Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. And we also have Mike Sills, who is the regional urban forester for the Dallas region for the Texas A&M Forest Service. Mike, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you. Well, Mark, we're going to start with you. Since you're a City of Plano employee, we always like to ask our, our comrades what it what it is about them, one thing that might be a little out of the ordinary or unique that we don't know about you. Very good question. Uh, well, uh, as you can see with my last name, uh, it's a little hard to pronounce, uh, and that's because uh, I'm Canadian, or I was Canadian, uh, I'm now American. <laughs> Uh, but I was born in Canada, and uh, I have a lot of uh, roots in hockey, and uh, I coach a lot of hockey down here at the uh, Children's Star Centers uh, in Dallas. My son plays hockey. Uh, I go to a lot of Dallas Star games, and so uh, that's kind of something that a lot of people don't know about me. So if I told you the goalie was standing on his head, you would know what I was talking about. Exactly. He probably would be... Uh, going for a shutout. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Mark. Well, let's start talking about our situation with our trees. As you guys know, we had a really powerful and devastating winter storm called Yuri. And uh, I I'd like to talk a little bit about what the impact was on Plano's tree canopy. And how did our trees fare with this extreme cold? Good question. So, you know, we really know that Plano residents as a whole, they really love their trees. Uh, trees have special places in a, a lot of our hearts. You know, we make memories with trees. We plant trees when we buy a new house. Uh, we put a swing on a tree. So a lot of uh, our residents just have really good memories of trees. And uh, when you've had one growing at your house or in a park and, and you see it get damaged, it really can affect you emotionally. Uh, one thing that I think a lot of residents don't know is that we have uh, almost 1.7 million trees in the city of Plano. And those have uh, a value of $1.61 billion. And so trees are assets. You know, they, they, uh, they're more than just assets. They, they play on our emotions. And, uh, you know, we understand that Plano uh, loves their trees. Winter Storm Uri was a record setting storm with low temperatures well below five degrees. And we actually had over 200 hours of below freezing temperatures between February 9th uh, and the 19th. And a lot of the trees that have been injured in uh, Plano and across DFW really um, have been lace bark elm, uh, where we've seen some vertical frost cracks on the trees. Uh, Texas ash, uh, Chinese tallow has been another one, which is an invasive species, uh, and then red oak. Um, and so what we've done on our side is we've been going through the neighborhoods and, and trying to figure out how many trees uh, have been affected by the storm and we've been keeping track of all the trees uh, in public properties and private properties as well. Mike, you want to chime in on that? I know that you look at uh, more cities than just Plano being over the Dallas region, but the problem we had here in Plano was by no means isolated. Yeah, I guess the only comment I have that comes to mind is um, with uh, oak species, the, the live oaks, um, some people will ask, and, and I've been looking at it on the street, um, you'll see a, a live oak that's done really well, and then another one sitting right beside it that's not doing well at all. And we're, I think uh, 
we're kind of chalking that up to uh, genetics, you know, mm-hmm. just where the tree, uh, where it originated from way, you know, generations back. And so, uh, because it's just real variable that what you see between, between trees you know, of the same species. Well, gentlemen, full confession, I love trees, but I am not an expert when I look at trees. You know, I like I don't know the differences between trees. So I have a feeling probably a lot of people are like me. So how would I even begin to know if my tree is dead or not? I mean, I can imagine if it doesn't have any leaves at all, that's probably a good sign. But there probably are other things. How, how do I know it's in trouble? I'll, I'll go. Um... If they, uh, you know, if it's, I, I have people, well, they can, if they can reach a branch and, and tell whether or not the, if the uh, branch is brittle or if it's flexible, if it's flexible, it's, it's, chances are it's still alive, but if it's brittle, then that, that part's dead. And, um, and, and, and if it's got green coming out, it's still got some live tissue there. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, trees where the tips are died back and it may go back like five feet back into the canopy and you see uh, trees bushing out on the main stems Mm -hmm. and uh, partly alive, but the the tips just got a lot of uh, die back on them just because of the cold and, and being dried out. And I can add on to that, you know, the general consensus right now among arborists, uh, you know, including uh, Mike here, and we've met with some members from ISA Texas and other uh, organizations, and we really don't know uh, what's going to happen to a lot of these trees that are recovering right now. You know, we had a really, really cold period that injured the trees. Uh, We went through a really wet period uh, where we had extended amount of rain. Uh, and now that the faucet has turned off, we're going to go through some periods of drought. And so we, we really don't know if some of the trees that are recovering right now, if they're going to continue to recover, or if when the, the faucet dries out, like we said, that they'll go through increased stress in the summertime, and then we could see additional uh, decline in some of these trees. And uh, so it's kind of a wait and see approach right now. Now, if you don't have a lot of growth at all in your tree right now, uh, it's pretty late in the season not to have any growth, and most likely uh, your tree is probably dead. Uh, another sign of symptom you can kind of look at on your tree that shows stress is if you have any new growth coming from the trunk of the tree. Places where you normally wouldn't see a, a, any new leaves or branches, so like the base of the tree, the trunk, or kind of in the heart of the tree with some dieback from the tip. So uh, it's kind of a wait and a see approach right now. I think Mike would agree with that. So, Mark, are you saying, I mean, I think you're you're saying that don't don't be hasty <laughs> in mm-hmm. making a decision, but there's some things to think about. Should should people be hiring arborists to give a second opinion at this point or continuing to wait? Mike, you want to go ahead and answer that one? Sure. I was just about to say, when in doubt, call an arborist and um, they can find a uh an ISA, which stands for uh, International Society of Arboriculture uh, Certified uh, Arborist online. And that uh, website is isa-arbor.com. And they can uh, click on the uh, Find an Arborist tab, and then they can uh, find one by location, putting in their country and then their zip code, eventually their zip code and, and a list of certified arborists will come up and they can, they can just choose off that list, uh, who they want to call. All right. For our listeners, remember, we'll drop that website in the show notes to make it easy for you. So you don't have to worry about writing it down while you're driving about. If I do find out that my tree is dead, what should I do? Again, I would call an arborist, a certified arborist, use them to uh, remove the tree. And I would on, add on to that, you know, trees can stand up 
for a period of time after they've been completely dead. Now, some species are better at holding their limbs together than other species. Uh, but if you know your tree's dead, you know, the, the main reason that we're asking people to take down their trees when they are dead is because they, they can become a hazard. And, uh, you know, as trees dry out, they get brittle. Uh, and when you start getting windstorms and these thunderstorms, which we know in Texas uh, are pretty unpredictable, you can get limbs that fall down. And, and our concern is on the safety of um, all the residents uh, in, in Plano and really all of Texas uh, to, to remove all these safety hazards from the tree. Anything that could get injured, you know, uh, a dog or a human or a home that we want to protect or a car that you park under a tree, those are all targets. And so we're really looking out for safety when it comes to these dead trees. What suggestions do you have, both of you gentlemen, as for finding a good contractor to remove a tree in your in your yard? So I can start with this real quick, Mike. Uh, most people don't know that um, you know tree care is not regulated in Texas, and so you know anyone can pick up a chainsaw and and chop down a tree. Uh, you know it's not necessarily a good thing or bad thing. Uh, I think once you start getting into the really big trees. Uh, the medium size and large trees, you know, most homeowners are not going to want to try to take those down on their own. Uh, and so I think being and uh, finding a contractor that has insurance, uh, especially workers comp, uh, comp insurance, that's going to protect the homeowner uh, in case there's an injury or something happens at the site. And uh, we want to make sure that the homeowners are aware that they should be looking for for those kind of contractors that do have insurance not just landscape insurance but workers comps insurance workers comp insurance that's the most so you have your tree taken down by a contractor now you've got all that wood sitting there what do you do with all the wood well hopefully the you've negotiated with the contractor to haul the wood away from your property uh, that is the ideal situation that the residents have that uh, chipped up into a bucket truck and that it is hauled off to a local landfill to be recycled, to be used at another place like Texas Pure, which uh, you know recycles a lot of material uh, in Plano that is available for residents to purchase for their landscape needs. Mike, do you want to add anything else to that? Yeah, no, uh, just they, you know, as far as finding a, a, a contractor, the, uh, Again, I've just, I just tell people 100% of the time to go to the website, uh, isa-arbor.com and, and go down the list and find an arborist there. They're, uh, they're us they're, those arborists listed on there, usually uh, if, if, they're, if they're not doing it on the side or something uh, like I did for a while, uh, they'll have insurance and that type of thing. And... Uh, but uh, I would I would uh, I would start there. And I would also re I would also recommend that Plano residents go to the bulk waste collection information website. I don't have that website available right on, but I know that we'll make it available to you at the end of this video. But that will list the days of the week that residents can place their um, any kind of debris that they're wanting to get picked up. Uh, I do know that there's a certain limit on to how big your pile can be. Uh, and after it reaches a certain limit, there could be a fee associated with removing a larger amount of debris. And as far as I understand it, and I didn't understand it uh, until last week, I know that in Rowlett, I can put my brush in the front of my yard, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure in Plano that the debris has to be placed uh, in the alleyway behind the home. And so that's something that's important to know as a resident, uh, where you have to place your material and what day of the week you can place it out to be picked up. How about the stump? Should you remove the stump or just leave it? Mike? I think that's just homeowner preference. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're planning on re, uh, planting a tree back in the same spot, then you'll have to get a stump grinder and get the stump out. But uh, I think for the most part, that's just preference of whether they want that mm -hmm. little stump there or not. Yeah, some people might want to 
convert it into a little chair, you know, that's maybe two feet off the ground or maybe a little chess table. I think it's going to really depend on, like Mike said, what you want to do. But I, I believe most people will want to replant a tree. And so we do recommend removal. And it's recommended that you get at least one to two feet below the soil level. That way you can replace soil on top of the stump and still be able to grow grass in that area. I was going to say, we, we had to take out our trees. I actually feel fortunate we took out our trees a while back because they were diseased. It was just end of life for those trees. So we got, got ahead of the storm. But I would tell folks when you take out a large tree and you remove the stump, you know, it's going to take a while because it still decomposes underground, you know, so like leveling still has to happen. Well, I heard you both say, you talk about replanting trees and, you know, that's going to be the hardest thing, I think, for everybody just emotionally is if they do have a dead tree, seeing that tree go and wanting to plant again. So Mark, what would you recommend? You know, you, you have um, a special oversight and passion for the Plano tree canopy. Thoughts on what people should be planting? Yeah. So uh, first and foremost, the best time to plant a tree is going to be in the fall and in the winter. So starting in October, uh, all the way through about, you know, into early spring, like April, those are the best times to plant a tree. And the reason that is, is we want to give the tree as much time in the ground to root before the summer heat comes. So that's number one. Uh, the second thing to do, and we talk about this all the time in our industry, is planting the right tree in the right place. And so usually what we say is, you know, identify the location of where you want to plant a tree. Uh, and then identify things around that location. Do you have power lines? Do you have irrigation? Is there a gas line? Is it close to a sidewalk? Uh, is it in a really wet area? Is it in a maintained area? So those are all kind of questions that you want to ask yourself. Uh, once you figure out, okay, this is the location. These are the, the different uh, attributes I'm looking at of the location. Then you can pick a tree. And the tree selection can vary, you know, do I want a small tree? Do I have room for a, a small tree or a big tree? Is it shaded? Is it full sun? And so I have a list that I've included. It's called the recommended tree list. Uh, it's not the, you know, the be all of, of all trees that would do well in Plano, but it's a good list of trees that we have found to be successful when we planted out in the parks. And as we all know, the parks are, are a little tougher on trees. They don't have um, well, they do have irrigation, but, you know, they get uh, played around, pulled and tucked and climbed on by uh, by some of the younger kids. And that's not necessarily the case uh, at a uh, homeowner's property. There's probably a little bit better care that's going on there just because it's one tree as opposed to hundreds of trees in the parks. Uh, but, yeah, I think planting the right tree in the right place is really the key. Uh, Mike, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, I... So everything that Mark said, uh, we we have a. I'm sure he has a spot for it on on the Plano website somewhere. But we have a spot, and if people want to just search uh, Texas Tree Planting Guide, uh, it that is a guide on our Texas Forest Service website, Texas A&M Forest Service website that uh, that that uh, folks can go to and put their uh their county in and it'll a, a list of trees will pop up uh the, the the number of trees that pops up depends on which guide they use so there's an express tree selector and there's a custom tree selected and if you use the express one like four trees will pop up if you use the custom tree selector you'll get more like a, a dozen or 14 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and then all, all that uh, Mark was describing on planting and picking the right place there, uh, there is another uh, tab on that webpage that uh, it's got the tree information in it and it's got videos and uh, diagrams, you know, don't plant underneath the power line, or if you do just plant a small tree, um, information mm -hmm. uh, that that talks about those types of things. And just to go on top of that, you know, we we link a lot of the Texas A&M Forest Service videos from the website he's talking about at Plano's website as well. So 
Uh, you know, we love that information. It's very useful and, and very accurate. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on our Inside Plano podcast today. We, these were our urban foresters, Mark Bodwin from the city of Plano and Mike Sills from the Texas A&M Forest Service. Gentlemen, thanks again. We appreciate you being here with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks. You know, Shauna, one of the one of the key things about the trees is people may not realize that when they have a dead tree sitting there, but it really can be a hazard to public safety. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know the numbers, but I know it's in the hundreds of pounds, you know, a limb, especially on a healthy old tree or an unhealthy old tree, those limbs are hundreds of pounds, 800 pounds, you know, and if that comes crashing down, that could be a very, very bad thing. So um, it's disappointing to see how many trees just really suffered through the winter storm. You and I know too, like landscaping really struggled too. I lost I lost my Indian hawthorns. I lost my rosemary. I thought that you couldn't kill it, but <laughs> the winter storm killed it. My pomegranate. Um, and I lost trees in the backyard. We actually just took out our trees um, in June because we, we just knew that they were dead and they needed to go. And backyard looks very different right now. It's a little shocking. Palm trees always have a hard time in Texas in areas where it gets cold during winter. We have some neighbors that had some really nice palm trees in their backyard, and now they're as brown and as dead as they could possibly be. Oh, it's just hard. Fortunately, we can plant again, and um, you know uh, things will grow back. It's just it's a difficult time. It's just kind of like another one of those little, uh, you know, stick it to you moments that the last fifteen months have provided. Now it took down some of our trees, um, but but we'll rebound. Well, let's talk about um, something that's coming up relatively soon. This is July, and July is kind of an important month uh, for those who like to watch city affairs. Um, and then I think everybody really should be interested uh, because July marks uh, the start of the 2021-2022 city budget process um, officially. At the last council meeting of the month, city manager Mark Israelson will present his recommended budget to the city council. And that kicks off many weeks of council conversations, uh, discussions, public input. Uh, there's a town hall, uh, certainly a lot of social media and uh, newsletters uh, will be going out getting feedback on that recommended budget. And that's all gearing up towards a vote in September when council will set the tax rate and they will formally adopt the operating budget for fiscal year 2021 through 2022. Our fiscal year starts on October 1st. So um, this is your city. This is your city budget. It is comprised of many things, but one thing that it is comprised of um, are property taxes. So as a taxpayer, we definitely want your participation. So please stay tuned. Um, again, at the end of July, that budget will be presented to city council for consideration and, and and we look forward to your feedback. Shauna, and driving around Plano, have you noticed something different that just started last month? I have. And um, I really actually was surprised. It was something I didn't see coming. What yeah. are we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about those e-scooters, the yeah. rentals. They're back. <laughs> I didn't think it would come back. I really was surprised. <laughs> yeah, the company is Bird, Bird Scooters, and the they travel, each scooter travels at a maximum speed of about 15 miles per hour. City law only allows the scooters to be used on streets with a speed limit of 35 miles per hour or less. Uh, the scooters cannot be parked within a pedestrian pathway. They cannot block driveways. And throughout the city, this was really smart, and I think this is designed to prevent some of the problems that other cities had the first time the scooters came to North Texas. There's home zones that were pre-approved throughout the city. Each home zone can have just a few scooters in it. So you don't get a pile of dozens of dozens of scooters in one place. And then also, so you don't see the scooters just left all across the city in places where they're not supposed to be, the company has to pick up the scooters every night. They have a little chip in them and they use GPS so they know exactly where the scooters have been placed. And uh, hopefully this will 
uh, get rid of some of the unsightliness of just seeing scooters dumped in locations across the city. And the home zones will only have, I believe the maximum is four or five to each home zone. So we'll see how it goes. But, uh, you know, we have new rules in place as a city to govern these scooters. And I, I think we have a head start on making it a viable program instead of what happened a few years ago. Yeah, definitely. A few years ago, it was uh, the wild, wild west, right? Everybody was kind of learning as new technology was rolling out. And Plano wasn't alone in that. Many, many cities were dealing with what do, what do uh, rental bikes and scooters and all of that mean. So those rules sound very reasonable, honestly. Yeah, well, I, saw, I saw a few people just today riding around on scooters. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so some people are starting to take advantage of them. Well, and, you know, to your point about um, limited numbers of scooters and in home zones, one thing I have not seen that's different than before, and I, I never really saw it in Plano. I saw it in, in some other cities that we spend time in. Um, scooters just laying down, kind of stacked, you know, blocking the sidewalk and things like that. I haven't seen any of that. So it certainly seems like we have a better approach now that makes them more useful and less disruptive. Well, you know, surprisingly enough, here we are at the end of another podcast. Do you know this is episode 43? It just blows me away. Time goes by fast. And Steve, you may not know this, but today's topic, trees, was suggested by one of our listeners. So um, I would encourage all listeners of the Inside Plano podcast, please send us an email, you know, give us feedback on this show and let us know things that you'd like to hear about. You know, we don't always have to talk about departments. If you're interested in a specific program or a service that's offered by the city, we'd be happy to find that person and bring them on and talk to them more. We would also very much appreciate if you would leave us a rating and a review on whatever podcast platform you listen on, because it helps other people find our show. And uh, we know that you like it and we'd like to have other people like it as well. So until next time for the podcasting duo of Haley and Stoller, <laughs> thank you for joining us. It's been a good one. Thank you, Shauna. Bye, everybody. Have a great month. Bye. And that's it for our Inside Plano. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did doing it. If you have any comments or suggestions, send them to us at askplano at plano.gov. Bye. Talk to you next month. The Inside Plano podcast is brought to you by the City of Plano. Oh, 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 o